Constitutional Conversations is a series of discussions by America's leading scholars about the principles, framing, ratification, and implementation of constitutional government in the United States. This series is hosted by the James Madison Memorial Fellowship Foundation of Alexandria, Virginia. His Hamilton Jefferson relationship is one that's probably inexplicable even today. We know many things about it, so I don't mean to say when I say inexplicable that we don't know the facts. What we don't know are some of the fundamental sentiments. We know that Madison and Jefferson were very close. They, they were intimate friends. To some degree, we may say, Madison followed Jefferson's lead with respect to certain political commitments. But he didn't quite follow him philosophically, theoretically. In fact, as often as not, Madison provided the lead for Jefferson in thinking through problems of politics and philosophical expression. But they became such close partners, such close allies, that their entire careers, starting from the period when in the 1780s they became associated in fighting for reform in the Virginia Constitution and in the Virginia laws, all the way through the end of the presidency of James Madison, who succeeded to Thomas Jefferson, they remained close, dedicated allies. Their relationship was unshakable. Whereas, with Alexander Hamilton, we have a period of collaboration between Madison and Hamilton, beginning with their service in the Confederation Congress, when what they were doing was laboring to invigorate and strengthen the Confederation so that it would be adequate to the purposes of a union, so that it would have the ability to acquire revenues and the ability to engage in diplomatic conversations with some degree of authority. So they were collaborators, but they were never close friends. When in 1787, in the Constitutional Convention, they worked toward the same end, they were collaborators, but not close friends. When Hamilton recruited Madison to co-author the Federalist Papers, they were collaborators, but not quite friends. One illustration of this occurs on June the 6th in the Constitutional Convention. That's where Madison gives a lengthy speech which becomes, in effect, the preliminary statement of his argument about factions, which is published in Federalist Number 10, the very famous argument about the extended republic and his defense of the extended republic as a defense against faction as opposed to a small republic. Alexander Hamilton, on that day in his notes about Madison's speech, makes the observation, it isn't all he thinks it is. There's something to it, but it's not complete. And that's just perhaps an expression of what their relationship was like. There were some things that they were in sync about, but not completely in sync. So when in the 1790s, Madison moves in opposition to Hamilton, opposes Hamilton's program for the Bank of the United States, opposes the program for the assumption of state debts, opposes the proposal for the support of manufacturing, and other such things throughout the course of the 1790s, and they become such partisan opponents that they seem to be really almost at one another's throats, you might imagine. Uh, it, it's only an expression of that area in which, though they were collaborators, they were not wholly in agreement theretofore, that there was something always missing in the interaction between Madison and Ham uh, Hamilton. And that missing thing was what Madison found in Jefferson. So it led them in different directions. But interestingly enough, while Hamilton and Jefferson became mutually antagonistic and never accommodated one another to the point of forming a respectful appreciation for the other, Madison and 
Hamilton remained respectful of one another to the end. Hamilton refused to simply reject Madison as dishonest, and Madison, to the end of his life in 1836, was still defending Hamilton's integrity. So it is a curious set of relationships among these founding fathers where we, if we look only at the politics, we think we can find only an adversarial posturing. When we look deeper, we find an intellectual engagement is the fundamental tenor of the relationship. And there is a degree of moral commitment added to that, which gives fuller expression to the relationship between Madison and Jefferson. Constitutional Conversations is made possible by a generous grant from the Fairley S. Dickinson Jr. Foundation. Constitutional Conversations is made possible by the James Madison Education Fund.